Okay, we're back live in Las Vegas. This is Silicon Angle with Mookie Bonds, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. My co-host, Dave Vellante, and our next guest is going to be here to talk about the future of the data center. Brian Fanzo with IO Data Centers. IO data centers. Uh, welcome to The Cube. Thank you. So, uh, Amazon says, we're going to replace the data center. Kind of yesterday they were saying, the data center is going to be gone in the future. <laughs> okay, right. small business, maybe law firm, small group, maybe use the cloud, but data center is not going anywhere in the future, um, as Dave and I were talking about yesterday. So, let's talk about the software defined data center. So, talk about IO, your company, and what you guys are doing around here, cloud, and the data center. So, from IO's perspective, you know, the, the data center is the foundation of any cloud. The cloud has to live somewhere. So at I.O. we have uh, a, a global footprint of data centers that we've owned and operated. We went from uh, a co-location uh, kind of product service type company to now we uh, have modules that are manufactured uh, in U.S. in Chandler, Arizona. And we actually moved from the modulars to adding the software, which we call I.O.S., which is a data center operating system software. And we call software to find uh, I think everything seems software defined these days. I have a software defined watch. But uh, software defined data center, but really it's a software control data center. And we actually are able to provide that control because of the modular footprint that we actually have. So we have uh, modules in uh, Singapore, as well as uh, Ohio, New Jersey, uh, Phoenix, and you know, the ability to kind of scale as well as coverage you know, with software in the data center, where we're taking we're taking the next step, kind of where everyone else really wants to go, and you can't have a cloud without a data center. That's for sure. We uh, met with James Hamilton yesterday, the VP, distinguished engineer at Amazon. All he's talking about is scale, scaling uh, data centers. Obviously, they build their own data centers. Um, we talked about open compute, which is the trend toward essentially people cobbling together their own hardware. But at the end of the day, it's a software paradigm. Amazon is showing the way that people want pre define software application workload infrastructure. Right. And everyone wants Amazon on their data center. So talk about that trend. Talk about the build your own customization. Because you have some big name clients like Goldman Sachs. I mean, these are not small firms. Right. I mean, these are large data centers. So talk about the trend towards this movement where we're going beyond the rack and stack gear to I need to have pre-configured, pre-tested, hardened infrastructure that looks like cloud, feels like cloud, and is cloud, but on premise. And I think that's a, that's a good point. I, I was participating, I think they are calling it hybrid IT or hybrid cloud. But I think to be actually a hybrid on premise, you have to have a data center on premise. And with IO, we have modules that are actually installed at our customer sites. So some of those customers have them in their own data center, in their own site. We have modules that actually can be dropped in any location. And part of that for the on-prem, you have to have software that ties the data center together. You can't have a hybrid solution with no real software that bridges uh, a co-location or a DCAS data center that you have, an on-prem data center. So for real, to make the actual you know, hybrid cloud or hybrid IT work, you have to have software that bridges that gap. And that's kind of where the software defined data center comes. Because if you are able to actually monitor and manage power and IT infrastructure all the way up the stack across not only what you control as your private cloud or on site, but also what you're paying for at a DCAS location or even your you know, data center 1.0 you know, traditional uh, environment, you, that, our software iOS kind of bridges that gap and kind of enables everyone here, you know, Amazon is pushing the envelope, but you have, if you are going hybrid, you have to have software that kind of ties the two together for sure. So Brian, uh, John and I have seen your facility, very impressive, the physical security, I mean the first thing you're greeted with is a, basically a roadblock. That's you can't true, go hard, hard to go in and out for lunch and sometimes. And out, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of what you'd like to see in a modern, you know, data center. But talk about what, what's different about when you walk into you know, one of your data centers, what's the difference between that and what you might see at you know, the run of the mill data center in whatever, New York City or any major city or out in the rural area? So from our, you know, our data center footprint, we have uh, multiple locations like I said, and, and the Phoenix site is our, our headquarters where uh, we're kind of based out of. And the idea of security is a big deal. I, I think uh, a lot of the conversation we're hearing here, security is, a, is, is definitely something that we have to be aware of. And 
what we're able to do with our software for the data center is we're actually able to control the infrastructure, but we're also able to provide security elements. So when you walk into our data center, you're greeted by man traps and your traditional raised floor data center uh, security, but when you go into the modular section of our data center, which is, uh, you know, we've built out as we, as we grew through traditional, we, we are eating our own dog food, uh, go to say, so we moved from traditional raised floor to actually modules that are uh, located in our Phoenix facility, the security layer is now taking another step. And uh, I can't, I did nine years of uh, cybersecurity with uh, Department of Defense, and one of the big things with security is you want layers. And the module gives us that layer, as well as the ability to actually control those that layer with the software. So the software defined, our software, we, we call it software controlled or intelligent controlled platform. And when you go to our data center, it looks different because now, even though you have access to the data center and you've gone through these three security, now you can actually block off your security per module. And the other nice part is it's separated between your IT gear and the infrastructure support below. Well, I mean, I, I, I was impressed. I mean, I've never been in the data center like that. I've never been in Amazon's data centers, obviously. Right. I don't know if anybody's ever been in Amazon's data centers. It's, uh, <laughs> we don't know, know where they're at for some but, time. Um, some look like anyway, as well. Um, the first thing you notice is the size. I mean, it's enormous. So what, 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 what kind of square footage do you guys have globally? So globally, we're over two million square feet. So we're just right around that, around that number for... So that puts you at the same scale as, uh, as an Amazon or a Google or a Microsoft. Is that, is that That's fair, right? Right, I mean, we're playing on that the square footage wise. And I, uh, we kind of joke because the square footage is a lot of the way that people that talk about data center 1.0, everything's square footage. But we actually take it because of the density we're able to drive with our modules, we actually have higher density IT than, than that two million square footage if you did it to, you know, transfer to another company that just had traditional raised floor. Well that was the other thing, so it was, it was very large, but also like spotless. Now, <laughs> some data centers I've been on are very clean, some aren't, you know, but yours obviously are, very well organized. And the pods were very, very dense. And we would describe the pod, and we also saw the manufacturing facility for the pods as well. And John and I, when we were in Barcelona a few years ago, we saw the HP pods. These were quite a bit different. They were, they were actually roomier, uh, but you would argue more dense, right? And we talked to some of the guys who were building them that came from HP, but so talk about that a little bit. So they're, you know, they're manufactured. They're not your shipping containers. We don't, they're designed and manufactured there in Chandler, Arizona. And I like to think of it as everything's fine-tuned. We have an applied intelligence group that's out of San Francisco, uh, and they were teamed up with McLaren, uh, the race car company, which I think's you know kind of pushing the boundary of kind of analytics, you know, real-time simulation. Uh, we are working with you know I was talking a couple weeks ago with the McLaren group, and a lot of the things they do in a race car for optimizing a every single square inch, every square second matters for a race car. We're taking that same analytics and putting it towards the data center, but not only software, but we're doing that for the physical, what you see, we call the, you know, our IO Anywhere modules. And so with those modules, we've, custom, we've engineered every square inch of the module. So when you go inside the module, you know, it's your uh, 18 cabinets is our traditional uh, data module, and it has a four, a four foot uh, cold aisle, three and a half foot uh, hot aisle. But beyond that, we have sensors. It's, you know, it's close to about 800 individual sensors in that module that are controlled and managed through our software. So, you, you know, the idea that every single square inch has been manufactured for a reason, it's different than when you go into your traditional data center 1.0 environment and it's, you know, your air conditioning, you know, roof to ceiling. You could take a, a Kmart and a Walmart, you know, and, and think about how do you manage and control the infrastructure that's supporting that. You don't really have very much granular control in our modules because we've engineered them, gives the, you know, our customers as well as us for our co-location, our DCAS footprint, gives us that ability to control. So what, what do you consider the useful life of your, your data centers? Well, so right now we have kind of a, a big number for us is we actually hit over a million operating hours for our software with our modules. And the reason that's a, a big deal is because we actually now have that much data to actually go back and actually analyze, are we over-provisioning, under-provisioning? Can we drive higher density by changing you know, the way that the air comes from our air handling units below the floor? And everything, you know, customization seems to be a big trend here. We were talking about that a little bit about the ability to actually 
take and do customized individual solutions. And at I.O., you don't have to have, you can you know, build out, scale it out, because you can have four air handling units underneath your module if your density is not very uh, you know, high to begin with. But as you're increasing your density, instead of having to build a new data center or even buy another module, you can actually increase the amount of air handling units that you have in your module by just plug and play components, and now you can have higher density in that same module without having to kind of procure something else. So from a, from a, from a financial, from an accounting standpoint, you're, de you're depreciating your data centers over you know, a long period of time, right? I mean, because right. essentially you're in the real estate business in part, right? Right. But, but I've seen a lot of data centers today, and, and you talk to the CFO at the company, ask you know, how long you know, you're, are, you, are you depreciating this asset, and it's like, well, you know, 30 years. But a lot of these data centers aren't going to be around in, in 30 years, at least in that current form. Correct. Um, so, so what's what's going to happen to all those data centers that are out there? Well, and I think it's funny because the the data center I think is it's it's real estate. It's been real estate, but uh, we we were at VMworld and a couple of people had come up and asked, "What's I/O doing at VMworld?" And we aren't a data center company where you're just a real estate company. We've taken the uh, the initiative and the drive to kind of go modular. So now you can have a module on site. You can set a module outside in Arizona and Alaska. Uh, we joke that you know one day they can take modules and, and, and run them up the mountain if they needed to. And the, really, what we're we're changing the data center from it's just something you buy, you depreciate, and then you have to you know either scrap it or build from scratch. And we're actually making it something that every single time that you change an IT, I, I joke that you know the iPhone six years ago we didn't know that you needed the iPhone because the iPhone didn't exist. We didn't know that you needed that much mobile footprint, that much compute to support that, and being able to scale kind of eliminates the walls of the data center because of our modules, and that's, I think, the future of the data center is really, it's no longer square footage won't matter, and really the location won't matter, because that's with our software, and we kind of talked about hybrid IT, hybrid cloud, the ability to actually, you know, using our software, the bridge your locations, so we have a data center that's in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have one that's in New Jersey as well, you're actually able to, to not only manage and control both of those locations from anywhere, but you can actually shift data load between the two of them as well. So the location of your data center will soon not matter as well, and that kind of gets you out of the real estate conversation as well. Brian, talk about the uh, notion that uh, Amazon's putting out there as the internet operating system, because essentially what they're doing is talking about notifications, talking about all this stuff that we were joking yesterday in, 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 a, in, a, in a realistic way, that this is like a mainframe. This is a globally distributed large scale computer called the cloud. That is the operating system model. So you guys have a unique approach. Talk about how you guys look at that fundamental holistic picture as an operating environment. You got software, data centers, not just gear. Talk about what it takes and how you guys are rolling out, because you guys have an innovative solution. You got huge clients buying you know, data centers basically from you guys, you ship them to them. Um, but it's not as easy as just rack and stacking gear. There's a big software element. That's kind of what Amazon's talking about. IBM was talking about it last week at IOD. A lot of notifications, a lot of scheduling. This is the elastic infrastructure model. So, so what's your take on that? How do you guys fit into that picture? And I think that's a, a kind of a perfect tie for us. And, and the cloud environment is interesting because now what we've just, what companies, and especially enterprise companies, are deciding is they no longer, they're shifting the responsibility. They originally said, uh, we want to control everything, everything has to be on our premise. Then they moved to the co-location or your DCAS type um, environment. And when they moved to that, they said, okay, I want to give you some control, but stay out of the rack. And now we're at a level with the cloud, and I think everyone here is, we, we don't want to have any control or anything that you have you know, tied down to the infrastructure. And we know the data center won't go away because it's the you know, foundation of, the, of anyone's cloud. We, you know, if you don't know where your, where your actual data center is that's supporting your cloud, how, how are you confident that you're uptime? Because if the lights go out in your data center, it doesn't matter what cloud provider is sitting above it, you're still going to be uh, you know, lacking service for your customers. Because when it comes down, we all want connectivity 100% of the time, 24 by seven, uh, and the data center matters, matters for that reason. And with our software, the operating system actually gives our customers the ability to actually shift that responsibility to something they log into. You can, we have a mobile app that is, uh, allows you to view updates and notifications. It'll, but viewing, and I think that's even kind of something that we're working with uh, McLaren to, okay, if I get a notification that says that this, uh, let's say, the cold air, the cold uh, aisle temperature is at above the threshold that I asked, you want to be able to actually control 
to change that. You know, giving me data that doesn't allow me uh, give me the answer. You know, that's kind of like asking the question without having the answer. Well, at I/O with our software, we've designed it to where you can actually control that infrastructure and now make the changes in the software without actually having to go to the physical data center. Okay, so walk me through the use case, okay, of a customer, okay, because um, you guys aren't dealing with mom and pop. Talking about like Goldman Sachs, huge scale um, company. So walk me through a typical use case of um, your customer base. Obviously, you know, we've talked with Facebook, uh, we talked to Google, but Facebook basically has a procurement where they're just buying so much gear. I mean, the app guys say, I need this, and they just basically they ship boxes, they build their own. But that's the enterprise is going to move into a, a different way. So take me through uh, what a customer looks like, why they're calling you, and what you guys do. Uh, well, so with our customers, what, we're, what we provide is we provide kind of the ability to, for them to have their data center any way they like it. It's almost like you know Burger King, you get it any, uh, your way. Because for us, if you have a co-location or you have your own data centers already, or maybe you have a couple of data centers in different locations, and then you want to have one on-prem as well, and then you want to have one in our facility, say in New Jersey, you can actually, with our software, control all of those different locations, unique environments, you can actually control and monitor all that software from one global single pane of glass. And really, our customers look at that as, okay, that I can now scale without having to get rid of everything I've already built and you know, kind of move from the traditional. We talk about the cloud. Everyone's trying to move uh, and migrate you know, up the IT stack. Well, you can migrate your data center the same way you would migrate anything else that you're turning you know, into virtualization and so, so on. So the other thing that um, those guys talked about the analyst briefing was the cost of, uh, uh, of computing. Servers, number one storage, networking, the gear, right. right, mainly servers. And the second one was uh, power uh, cooling facilities, and then third, power itself, right? So those are like the top three. And then the rest were like, you know, actually networking was like lower than that, but networking gear, and then it was other. So servers, cooling subsystems, and then power. And that's, right? that's so, our bread and butter. That's so, so talk about how you, because they're saying, well, hey, we take that off the table for you. I mean, that doesn't really, they don't really do that per se, but still, they bundle it in. But you guys also have a unique approach, because those are huge. How do you solve those problems? So, we, so for our customers, they actually have the ability to, to drill into the operating system and see the power usage all the, way, uh, all the way down to the individual server. But you can also scale it back to the cabinet that you're running, or to the module, or to the entire physical data center. So the power cooling, I, I kind of joke sometimes that if you don't really understand the power, if you can't look at a matrix in real time and tell me the power that your data center you're paying for, how can you? How do you know that you're getting what you're paid for? And a lot of the power, you know, that's out there, you pay for it as kind of like your, you know, for us, we want to give you the option like a power company. You you can log into the software and you can see real time what the power, what the cooling is running in the in the data center supporting your infrastructure. So so is that what the software defined data center is is to you? That you the ability to visibility on the data center infrastructure and, and be able to control it? Why don't you talk it, about that a little bit? It's the intelligent control. It's, you know, it's beyond even really just the software. It's the ability to actually take those million hours. We have 30 billion lines of data in our data center, on, in our uh, SQL database. We can actually take that data, applied intelligence group out of uh, San Francisco, then run analytics against it, and then using our software actually control your environment. You know, the, I, I focus on the word control because a lot of times, you know, in your car, if, it just, if the check engine light came on after the car had already overheated, it's not very valuable. But ideally, it comes on before you take, you know, so you can take it and get it fixed. And with our software, we want to intelligently control it. So we're going to fix the problem before it actually causes you downtime, which we all, that's, that's the foundation that we're all worried about. You know, we, we want to eliminate the, the downtime concern of our customers. Yeah, okay, software-defined data center. Very few people talking about the data center, John. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shipping data centers is a good business. I mean, uh, obviously, the data center's not going to go away. Certainly with Internet of Things, the notion of a data center, although the gear might, might look differently, build your own, but certainly there'll be more and more IP devices inside a company. So, you know, certainly we're bullish that the data center's not going to go away. It's just going to change. So you guys are doing a good job there. <laughs> IO.com, a commentary on CrowdChat is the best URL on the business. IO.com must really penalize you guys for Google juice uh, for page rank. You know, it's like uh, two, a two-letter URL, uh, easy to remember. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty nice for email <laughs> addresses, that's for sure. Yeah, I wonder if Google is knocked on your door for the Google I.O. Uh, conference. Um, I.O. Data Centers, congratulations. Brian, great to have you on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break, live exclusive coverage from Amazon's reInvent conference, all about the cloud, all about software, all about large scale. We'll be right back. <laughs>